Hi, my name is John, and I work on Amplitude's product education team. In this 12-minute video, we're going to learn about event-based analytics and the interplay between events, event properties, and user properties. The video uses visuals and examples and has two painless knowledge checks. If you can wrap your head around these ideas, you will get a lot more value out of Amplitude. Let's get straight to an example and visualize how Amplitude works. Here we have a music fan, and our fan listens to two songs on Monday and one song on Tuesday. What type of music are they into? On Monday they listen to folk and rock, and on Tuesday they go back to folk. So far they've been on the free plan. We indicate this with a blue sticky note and a shaded box. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that we record the fact that they were on the free plan with each of the three song plays. On Tuesday evening, our fan decides to change their plan from free to paid. Note here how we continue recording their plan as free. This is helpful because we might want to know what plan they were on when they changed their plan. So after that event is recorded, we change their plan to paid because now they're paying us. And this is attached to their next event, a song play later that day, along with the music genre, Metal. This isn't the only thing about the user or their device we track. We also set and send some information along with each event, like what browser they used. They used Chrome on Monday and Tuesday morning, and Safari when they changed their plan. And Chrome, again, on Wednesday. So what do we actually call these things? Our green sticky is the user, our music fan. The yellowish sticky notes are events, the things that happen, the actions that we care about. The orange stickies are event properties. They give us more context about these actions. And finally, we have the blue stickies. This is information about the user and or their device, and we call these user properties. The important point here is that with each event, we send event properties and all the current user properties set before or along with the event tracking call. Now, if this concept is foreign, one way to think about this is with a familiar idea, a row in a spreadsheet. Imagine you have a row for each event. What are the columns? Well, we record the time. We record something to identify the user. We record the user property plan and the value paid. We record the user property browser and the value Chrome. We record the event type song played, and we record the event property genre and the value metal. Let's do a quick activity and knowledge check based on what we've watched so far. Okay, question number one. How many song plays did we have between Monday and Wednesday? Okay, our first fan had four song plays. Our second fan had four song plays, so that would be eight. Question number two. How many active, which we define as having one or more events during the time period, paid plan users did we have on Monday? The answer here is zero. Looking at the events and user properties sent with those events, we don't have any plan paids on Monday. They are all plan freeze. Question three, how many plan changers free to pay did we have on Tuesday? Well, both of our fans had plan changed events on Tuesday, and both of those plan changed events had type properties with the value free to paid. So the answer is two. Question four How many paid plan song players did we have on Tuesday? This one is tricky. Fan 1 changed their plan but had no song plays after changing their plan on Tuesday. Fan 2 changed their plan on Tuesday and had a song play after changing their plan. So the answer is 1. Okay, hopefully the stickies are helping. But let's jump into Amplitude, or at least a screenshot from Amplitude. 
For this example, we're going to try to answer the question, how many users in the United States are playing rock songs or videos in the last 30 days? Let me break it down. We can translate this into a sentence Amplitude can understand. For events of type play song or video with a genre type event property set to rock, performed by users with a country user property value set to United States at the time the event was sent, show me the count of daily unique users for the last 30 days as a column chart. For many people, when they talk it out like this, it can really help getting the concepts to stick. Amplitude was designed to reinforce this workflow, but it can take some practice. Another great way to get a sense of how this works is by using user lookup or account lookup if you have our accounts add on. User lookup allows you to select a user and see the stream of events for a particular user. It is almost exactly like our sticky note exercise, but the events are listed vertically and in order in the left pane, and the information passed with each event appears in the right pane. Note how we can view the user properties describing the user and the device used when triggering this event, like country, SDK version, library, carrier, city, their playlist, along with event information. Here's the important point. It is all in the event. For this to truly sink in, we'll need to cover one more idea. And that idea is the difference between entity data and systems optimized for entity data and event data and products like Amplitude. How are they different? Entity data deals with nouns like users, work orders, and posts. Event data deals with verbs and the nouns connected with those verbs like user updated, work order edited, and post viewed. With entity data, we typically have a row for each entity representing the current state of that noun. When an update happens, it happens to the existing row. With event data, each event has a timestamp, action, and state of the action, and all related entities, for example, user or device, at the time the event was triggered. Entity data describes the present and is great for needing to know current state. Event data describes trends and behaviors and past state. It is great for complex product experience data. Entity data looks like this table, a row for each user, their current number of friends, invites, etc. Event data looks like this data structure on the right, holding device state, a timestamp, the action, the action state, what we call event properties, and the user state, what we call user properties. Why does Amplitude work this way? Why do we use the event approach? First, it is super fast. Second, it is flexible. We're not a bank that needs 100% structure and correctness. For product work, flexibility is very important. Third, it is easy to instrument, involving just small snippets of code. You basically leave all the messy details of data engineering, identity resolution, and optimization to us. Fourth, querying event stream data in SQL is hard. If you translated some of the insights and amplitude to SQL, they would run hundreds of lines of SQL. Fifth, this way of working encourages exploration and collaboration. Instead of needing to know every question in advance, you can track what matters, explore the data, refine your questions, and get new insights. We'll end with a final knowledge check. Event-based analytics is best for A, knowing the current state of an entity, B, comparing the behaviors of different segments of users over time, C, tables with one row per unique employee, D, detecting where users are abandoning a complex workflow. The answer here is B and D. Event-based data is all about informing product and design decisions, not being a CRM. The next question, when do user property updates become queryable? A, immediately. B, the next time the nightly update job runs. C, with the next event tracking call, if set before the call. D, immediately, if set along with the event tracking call. The answer isn't A. We might update a property behind the scenes, but we are mostly concerned with when an event fires. 
not B. No one can wait that long. The answer is C and D, with the event call, whether set before or along with the call. Final question. What best describes an event? A, an action like a click. B, a row in a database with a unique identifier. C, a timestamp action and the state of the action and related entities. D, something you can register for on meetup.com. It could be a click, but A is incomplete. Blindly tracking every click with no context doesn't really help. Although an event may show up in a database of some sort and does have a unique identifier, that doesn't really capture the essence. So not B. The right answer is C, a timestamp action and the state of the action and related entities. D would be fun, but it's not really the answer. Let's review. Event properties describe the event. User properties describe the user or their device. When an event is sent to Amplitude, we send a snapshot of the user properties. Using a user property in a where or group by clause is checking for a match for events with that user property snapshot, not the current value. Read queries like sentences, it's good practice. Get a feel for the data with user lookup. And finally, if you've got these concepts down, a good next step would be to learn about identities and identity resolution. We handle all the heavy lifting so you don't have to, but knowing how it works will make you that much more effective in Amplitude. Thank you, and we always welcome your feedback.